Hey guys, a few years back I switched from a regular pad to a TE. My input felt a lot cleaner and it was a huge improvement. A few days ago I got myself a hitbox. It felt like the logical next step on a quest for perfect input. I really like it. It's very similar to playing with a keyboard, which I've grown very accustomed to over the years, all the way back to the DOS version of ST. When playing the PC version of SF4 with a keyboard, it had something that was very convenient to charge characters. Some people refer to it as a synchronous SOCD. When conflicting direction keys were pressed, the last one you input always took precedence. This would let you chain horizontal charge moves without ever letting go of back, for example. The way that the hitbox handles SOCDs on the horizontal axis is to do left plus right equals neutral. This is very convenient for shotos as it allows convenient shortcuts, but not so much for charge characters. I found trying to perform quick ultra motions and reaction pretty challenging, especially from the right side. I decided to mod my hitbox to get the best of both worlds. The select key lets me switch between what I call shoto mode and charge mode. Shoto mode is the original hitbox behavior and lets you perform combos such as this without ever letting go forward. Charge mode is the new mode that I introduced which has a synchronous SOCD on the horizontal axis. It lets you perform the full BNBs of your charge characters without letting go of back. To perform this mod, the only materials you'll need are an Arduino Uno board, which you can order online for $15. This is a very convenient design built around a common kind of microcontroller. It handles all the boring stuff for you, as the power supply, GPIOs and USB flashing interface are all already laid out and ready to use. You'll also need five small jumper cables. As you can see, not very expensive or hard to find. The tools you will need are a regular A2B USB cable to flash the firmware, which I will provide, a 564 Allen key and a pair of pliers to open the hitbox case, and a screwdriver. The first thing you'll want to do is to hook up the UNO board to your computer and flash my firmware using the Arduino software. See the description for more information and links to the stuff you will need. After that, open your hitbox case and find some place to put the UNO board. Make sure you leave a piece of cardboard between it and the casing as it's made of metal and you don't want to short anything. I used glue to secure the cardboard to the board, but I'm sure you can do better than that. Then you will want to hook up the UNO to power. You will find some on the existing Toodles Cthulhu PCB in your hitbox. Use two of your cables for that. The two pins you want are marked VCC and GND in the schematic that Toodles provides. Hook up the VCC pin to the pin marked 5V on the UNO and one of the GNDs to the pin marked GND on the UNO. After that, you need to disconnect three buttons from the Cthulhu, left, right and select. Take the cables you disconnected and hook them up to pins 2, 3 and 4 of the UNO respectively, as that is where my firmware will read input for these. Then you will want to connect output pins 10, 11 and 12 back to the Cthulhu's left, right and select pins using your remaining three cables. That's it, you're done! You should now be able to connect your hitbox and tap select to toggle between shoto mode and charge mode. You will know charge mode is activated when the LED on the UNO is lit. Hopefully someone finds this of some use. Keep in mind this is by no means an unfair advantage. The existing PC versions of AE and Cross Tekken already behave like this for keyboard input. In the future, it would be cool if Toodle's firmwares and SOCG cleaners came with this as a standard option. Peace out and happy fighting!